Uh, good morning. So in our regular order, well, last year I gave was before Pesach, up to in the Seder Ishtalshels, in the Sphiris, covered the uh, Kesser, Chach, Mabina. So now we're up to Das. Being also that tomorrow is Chav uh, Ches Nissen, so I thought I would uh, speak about that as well. But I didn't want to just completely uh, ignore the order, so whatever I cover on Das I'll cover, and the rest will cover next week. And maybe there's a connection between the two. Um, so first a few words about Das, and then I'll uh, talk about Chav Ches uh, Nissen. So, when you look at this, different my modern. So there are spheres that are clear, the picture, what they are, and there are others that are not so clear, because either different places explain them differently, or just uh, a more abstract or more complex type of sphere. Like chesed is probably the one that most people can talk about. You know, love, kindness, kamilas chasodim, doing chesed, acts of chesed. And gvura too, which is discipline, restraint. Um, when it comes to chacham and bina, also relatively, chacham being an akuda, in the words of Tanya, paid a gimel, where, you, where just to use the atheist, he says, in the Asechel Shabbenefesh Hamaskel, Shua Maskel, called Dov and Ikrib Hashem Chachma Kayach Ma. So the very spark of an idea is Chachma. Ukishemetzi Kayach El Apel, Kayach El Apel, Shemizbein Besichle Lahavin Dov El Ashurei El Amke Mitech Ezed Var Chachma Muskel Besichle Nikre Bina. So Bina is drawing out from Chachma, from the Nakuda, the spark, the expansive, fleshed-out idea, as we discussed in the previous year. And that's what they're called, Ava'im. This is straight from Tanya, Peter Gimel. And more or less in Chesidus, you're going to find that's the consistent approach. Chochma is an Akuda. Bina is Recheves Hanor. Mayon, Nohar, like the spring, the, the, the drops of, a, of spring water. And uh, the Nohar, Recheves Hanor, the expansiveness of a river, Chochma Bina. Obviously, there are many details in it including Chachma Kayachma, and we covered some of those details. Comes to Das, I'm going to quote obviously from Tanya here, because later in the Pedic, at the end, he explains Das, but it's interesting, he only brings Das at the end of the Pedic after a long discussion, relatively speaking, of what Chachma Binar, these Bonanus in Alakus, like he says, Mamalakalam, Sevukalam, Kula Kamei Kalacha, in order to stimulate Ava Viyira, Emotions, because Chacham Bina is the father and the mother, and only afterwards the Alter Rebbe goes to Das. You look in the Malmori Chsidis, you're not going to find one place that says this is Das. In some places, Das is like he says here in Tanya, Hiskashus. Some places you hear the expression Hakara, Hargosha, in uh, in the uh, Ayin Beis, the end of Chelik Beis is a whole section on Das. And Sadiq Dalit from the Rebbe, Fridik Rebbe as well. And those are the language that's used, Hakara, Hargosha. Sometimes Das, you'll see here, is Maftecha de Kol Shis, Das, is what then Midas come out of Das, which then has to be understood. How does that fit with Chach Mabina? There's only one father, one mother. Um, so Das gets a little more complicated, what it is. A Chach Mabina, Bina is the Hachava. What is Das exactly in Keiches HaSeichel? Even if you say it's Iskashus, Iskashus is not necessarily a Seichel they could think, that's more the person is choosing to be Mekashin himself. You can also have Iskashus in Midas. When you love someone, it's also Iskashus. Yisod in some ways is Iskashus. Yisod is, uh, is bonding, is connection. So Das is a little more complicated. As we'll see in all the spheres, some of them are easier, I say easier, I shouldn't say easier, it's not the right word, they're all complicated. 
but some are more straightforward. So that's a little more elaborate. As I just said, some of the Lashenas, there's probably some others how Das is described. So let's talk about that in more detail. And also see that Das is not just an add-on. In other words, the Ikr is Chachum Bina, and Das is just a, a, side, a side story that actually Das is where the real Seichel becomes one with the person. And, uh, and when we say someone's lacking a full understanding of something, it really ultimately comes down to Das, not just Chachm and Bina. You know, when you say, for example, that a Godel is a Bar Das, a Cotton is not. So a Cotton could have Chachm and Bina, but it doesn't have Das. So a Cotton, a cotton cannot be a Shliach and, can, and has other guidelines, Cheroshet of a Cotton, because he's not a Bar Das. So what exactly happens by Bar Mitzvah, or by Wum and Bas Mitzvah, that adds this, that beginning of Das, you see, it's more than just a seichel thing, it's also a maturity based on basic halacha, when we call a bar das. You never say that a child doesn't have chacham bina. A child could be a chacham, ben chacham, and a child could have a bia maven, a bina, a bina, as we see with pale. So, the best place to begin, of course, is Tanya itself, because that's what Alter Rebbe teaches the race, and he says, Bezer Loshen. And then the Pedigimu, Vadas, Umaloshan, Vadam Yodas Chava. So right away, the Alter Rebbe is referring to the first time Das is used in Chumash. So the first place to look is how Taylor uses the word Das. So you would think Das is used in the context of understanding something. No. The way it's used in the Taylor, first time, is in the context of intimacy. Adam Yad as Chava, the Taylor's expression for husband being intimate with his wife, is Yada, he knew Chava. Why is that the case? The Alter Rebbe explains because who Huloshin is Kashus, is Chabrus. It comes from his Kashus, is Chabrus. You could have Chachm and Bina, Abba, Vima, as he says earlier in the Pedic, but if you don't have his Kashus, you're not going to have the birth of a child. There has to be the Vahoya Lebosad Echad that the father and mother come together, they don't connect, then you're not going to have any birth. So what do you see from that? That's even the Gashmis, biologically. Same thing is in Ruchnis, in Kei Chesan Nefesh, that you can have Chochm and Bina, you could have the spark of an idea, and Bina, you can have it fully elaborated upon, by Chava. And no one says, and I'll be tell you, you understand the Indian well, but it will not give birth to me this, it will not produce fruit because what's lacking is the iskashus of the person to the idea. So Chesidus teaches his kashus. Here the al Rebbe, let's see. Yeah. Here I think he only teaches one of the teaches. Chesidus teaches that the das, one is the iskashus of Chachmet Tabina, which makes sense because that's how it is in the Moshul, the Abba Ve'ima, the father and the mother. But you'll see in Tanya, he doesn't speak, I don't think he speaks about this, this Chabrus of Chach Metabina. And some are more than does, and I'm based for sure. He speaks here, the discussions of the person to Chach Metabina. In other words, you can learn an idea and know it, and, and I'm sorry, understand it. Have Chach Metabina, but you cannot be Makushetit. That's the key. So, Das as the discussions of Chabrus, like he says, Shemakasher, Daite, Bekesher, Omid, Vachazuk, Ma'eid. You talk him achshafte bechesek. Look how many lashenas the Alter Rebbe uses here. Mekasher daiti bekesher omitz bechazok meaid. Every word is bediuk. He could have just said mekasher daiti. No, dafku in a very intense, powerful omitz bechazok meaid. Every word here is bediuk. We talk him achshafte bechesek. He repeats again bechesek that he invests completely, immerses his thought. And then he speaks in what, in, in this case, we're talking about Gedul Haseyri and Sov Baruchu. Gedul Haseyri and Sov Baruchu. So his kashas clearly is this kashas of the Odom that has Chochman Bina to the Chochman Bina that he's learning in this way. And he dafke say that on Das. So just as his kashas, Das is Odom Yodas Chava, is complete intimacy, where they become Mamish one, 
And it's not just a conversation between Adam and Chava, and it's not just a casual, superficial interaction. It's a complete iskashus, complete keshet omits. Same thing in the Nimshal, in this case, Das, as that element. It's intimate understanding. So one of the few places that the Rebbe brings from Chassidim, the Rajbats, a beer on the Indian of Das, the famous Rajbats marshal that he gives on this, where uh, in the olden days, the people who couldn't read, they were illiterate. So they would hire a reader. And there was a guy who got a letter, a sad letter, that his father, Rahman al-Islam, passed away. He couldn't read the letter, so he hired someone to read it for him. As the reader was reading, the reader came to that port where it told, tells him the sad news. So the, the son, who's listening to the letter being written, faints. So the question is, why is the guy who's reading it not fainting? He knows, he read it first, and he's reading it straight from the document. Here he's only hearing it. The answer is, because Sinizayin Tate. For him, it's just he's doing a job. He's hired to read a letter. He could read any letter. He could have read a, uh, I'm saying my own uh, words. He could have read a recipe in a cookbook, for all that matter. He didn't really care what it says. The son, the gay benefish, says his father, says Ein Tata. So he says, this is an example for Das. You could have Chochm and Bina. We all see it all the time. You could be a smart person and conceive of an idea and understand it well. Bina, Archava. Talking about Bina, Peter, complete Archava, not not uh, not Eingeret or Opnarenzich, but truly, sincerely understanding it. But it's not yours. It's an idea. Look, a lot of people uh, have to study mathematics. Mathematics is a nice thing. It's great concepts. You can understand the well, but it's not your father. It's not the gate to you personally. Like, for example, talk about Lahavid. You could see people who are great mathematicians or other students of literature, whatever books they read. So they may be brilliant and have very deep connection to those ideas, but you're never going to see anyone dance with a book of mathematics or a work of Shakespeare or other work of literature. We dance at Simchas Teda with a Sefer Teda. Someone asked the question, a Sefer Teda is a book of Seichel, of Chochmah. You learn it. You study it. You read it. What's this dancing with it? You dance with your children. You dance with someone you love. The answer is, because Teda is Chayenu Veirachimenu. It's not just Chachm and Bina. There's a scarceness between us and the Teda. It's our life. It's our oxygen. It is exactly like a child. We are the Teda's child. And the child we marry the Teda. The Teda is like a Chassan. A Yidin and Teda like a Chassan and Kala. Etc., etc. So that's a very different type of relationship. And that's a very fundamental thing to know in general. There are many people you'll meet, or even you meet yourself. And you could be very smart and understand something, but it doesn't really make hazaza in you. It doesn't, make, it doesn't move you to do anything. So what's the reason? Is it because we're lazy? It could be because you don't have iskashas to it. You learned the idea. It's a nice abstract idea, but it's not a gay benefish to you. The gay benefish, you're going to act. When you know it's your life is dependent on it. Or in some other way, as I skashus in Lashon here, Shemekasha Daiti Bekashat Omits, it's a whole different story. When the Arizal would learn Teda, Nigla, he would sweat. Why would he sweat? Learning is not a difficult work. It's not like you're lifting heavy weights or you're running a marathon. Because he could, his whole nefesh was invested in it. So he would sweat. Just like by Matan they trembled. And all the four Lashenas. This is all comes as a result of Das. Now a child doesn't have that. A child can have Chach Bina, but they're not mature enough. Just like a child's not mature enough yet to have intimacy and get married and be intimate. Not Begashmis, maybe Begashmis Shaykh, but, not personal, but, but, but emotionally is not Shaykh. To have such a connection and commitment to another person. That requires a maturity. So the same is, so by bar mitzvah, bas mitzvah, by a girl, 12 years old, that's when das begins to emerge. Obviously it takes time. You can't say a 13-year-old is like a 20-year-old. But what's the point? When you start putting on film, you can control yourself. 
Yagmer Shalt Alalev, all these things are indicators of Das, not just Chokhm and Bina. You could have geniuses. There are Iluyim. Even in Teda, at five years old, they were geniuses. But to say about Bar Das, not necessarily. Maybe they had more Das than another five year old. But they're still, they're still a cotton. You can't call that person a god. Now, obviously, Butzim, Butzim, and Kafiyadir, you see that Baim, even at a young age, had high levels of, of Das. Everything is Lefierich. But still, no Rebbe became a Rebbe when he was five years old. He became a Rebbe when he was a god. Not just because his father didn't pass away. It's because it's just not Shaykh at that point to be in that type of state. So point being is that Das, therefore, is still a faculty of Seichel, but it's not Seichel per se, pure brain power. Like how well do you conceive of ideas? That's Chachma. How well do you understand and develop an idea? That's been Das is this part of Seichel where you connect, connect it to the Seichel that you're learning. And that's a whole different dimension. That's a very echuzdika thing. That's essentially what Alter Rebbe is saying. He then goes on, I'll just ve'ena masir daiti. Also, the opposite. When you're completely connected, then also you're not distracted. When a person has chokhmah and bina, they can easily get distracted. A person who's keshed omits and all the lashenis he uses is completely invested. He won't even hear the telephone like the Rebbe often brings in fabrengans. He's so immersed. There's nothing else going on in his life. Completely terasu menase. Then he says, Ke'af mishu chochem v'novin. He says clearly, even if it's a chochem v'novin, begadulis ain't say baruchu. So he has chochme and novin, he has bina. Hine im lo yekasha daiti v'tokam achshavte b'chezek u b'asmoda lo yeled b'nafshe yire v'av amitis. Ki im dim yeinus shov. Pretty sharp l'shenus. You can have Chochem and Bina complete, but if you don't have the Das, the Ikasha Daite, will not give birth to, Yiriv, to Avav Yir, just like a father and mother cannot give birth without them being intimate. Skashus, Yodas Chava, Odem Yodas Chava. And even if it may seem so, it's Dimyei Neshav. It's illusions, it's delusional. And that's why Das, he concludes, is Kiyom Hamidus V'chayusan, and it includes Ches and Vura and then and the rest of the Midas and Amfer and its branches. So you see how vital Das is. Take away Chachm and Bina, everything stops right there. It will not give birth to Midas. It will not bring, create another generation. Straight forward in Tanya. Now, what about some other aspects of Das that he doesn't mention here? Because here, remember, the Alter Rebbe is not coming, it's not an analysis of Das, the Tanya. This whole Pedic. He's coming to explain the Nefesh of the Kis and his Kechis. That his Kechis are completely dedicated to the Kus, both the Chabad and the, and the, the Mechel and Midas, as he explains. So here's the Gay, only the Indian of Das in context of these Boninus and the Kus and how it gives birth to Midas. It's not a full encyclopedia on Das. So it makes sense. Al Tareb doesn't have to bring every aspect of it. So that's not the, the point here. If anywhere, and I get it, say, okay, the Simon says, well, there the Alter Rebbe speaks more about the Midas. He actually wants to spell out each Midas more detail. But you find a few things about that that I want to throw into this uh, discussion. And that is, first of all, this also explains why Das is Kavam Tsoi. Remember, the Svidas have two ways that you can order them. Zet Tacha Zet. So Chochem Bina Das Chesed Gurit Tefers Netzachet Yisrael Malchus. That's the order. Das is Svida number three. In that order, and then there's the order of the structure, like a segel, the structure of Yamin Smail Emtza, being the right brain, the left brain, Chachma Bina, Chachma Zilimin, Bina is the Smail, and Das is like the center brain, the middle brain. And so Chesed to the right, Gvura to the left, Teferas in the middle, Netzachet, Yisrael in the middle, and Malchus in the middle. And it's like, so there's, uh, so all of them, if you think of Malchus, Yisrael, Teferas, and Das, they all have something in common. They're all Primis Dike Midas. They're not just Anida Midas, I'm sorry, Primis Dike Kechis and Sviris. So we'll discuss this later. What Das is to Mechin, to Feris is to Midas. Seda Machas will discuss when we get there. But Das, the Kavan Tsai, because it's not just the idea of having Seichel, it's also creating. The, he says here the full structure. 
So you see, even on Pialacha, anything needs three legs to stand. No table can stand on two legs. The best is four legs, but three is enough. So Chachma bin Adas, you need three. Yiskalus always needs three. Yem Echad, Yem Sheni, Yem Shlishi. Shehuch Lobeki Tev. So Das fills the picture because Das creates the full structure that Chachm and Bina can, fa- can ultimately give birth to fruit, which is like he says here, Ava Viyira. So Das is the Kavam Tzoyi because it's Kashus. As I said before, you can have Chachm and Bina or Ava Viyima and they don't have necessarily intimate connection. Intimacy is Primis. His Kashus is a Primis Dikir thing. It's not a Makiv Dikir thing. It's not a Chesenis Dikir thing. Chach Mambina love Dafka have his kashus without Das. So Das introduces that third dimension, just like we say by Tiferes, that's Briach Atich and Mavriach Min Akotza La Kotza. So what is it? Think about it when the Mishkan was built. So what connected the walls, the Yudias? So there was a Briach, a, 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 a beam that connected one wall to the next. Like you need to make sure that they stand straight. But then there was one Briach Atichin that went around the whole Mishkan. Why is that necessary? Even architecturally, if you want something to be balanced, if you just connect a wall to a wall, the next wall could be somewhat off. Uh, when you have one bar or one beam that connects all the walls, it creates like an equilibrium. It's like the spine in the human being. We have bones in our entire body. Why do you need the spine? The shid, the rechuta shid. Because that creates a balance that connects all the bones together. On the other hand, you still need a connector from one wall to the next. So similarly, Das, which is connected to the Shidra, actually, is considered, considered to be the beginning of the spine, the spinal cord, is the connector, Skashus, between Chachman and Bina, and in general between the entire structure, especially in the Mechin of the person. Now what about the other ideas in Das? I mentioned Hakoda, Hargosha, so, it's pretty logical to conclude that when you have iskashus, you're going to have a recognition and a feeling in the idea because it's negated to you. Chachm and Bina, like I said before, with mathematics or other ideas, or even the to Teda. You can learn Teda, it's nothing to do with me. You learn Teda, very beautiful ideas, they're brilliant people who know the whole Teda. It's not negated to their, to their actions or to their behavior or, or even to their, their personality. You see it all the time. People, are, people learn Teda and it doesn't affect them. Because what's lacking is the Das part. So if you want Hakoda and Hargosha in something, Hakoda means recognition, resonance. You learn an idea and you like recognize say, ah, I, now I understand, aha. It's like the aha moment. Hargosha means you feel it. Now, Hargoshe is not necessarily Midas per se, because Midas is the next level Chesling water, but it's the beginning. That in your Meichin, you can say, I, I feel the idea. Now, I'm sure you've had this experience. You learn something, it can take time. First time you learn it, maybe you get it a little. Second time, third time, fourth time. At some point, you say, ah, it's almost like a Gishmak, where you can say, I get it. Now I get it. I, the first time you learned it, and you think back, did I get it then? You got it, Makavdik. You got the idea, you had the Chachm and Bina, but you won't be Makusha to it. Miskashus means you really get it. You know, um, someone was in Yechidus by the Rebbe. He wanted to take his son out of uh, Temchet Mimim, put him in another yeshiva, where he felt was more learning, better learning. So the Rebbe said to him, first of all, Avdaf get better learning. Every yeshiva has its milas and chesenis, and in every yeshiva you have bochim that learn well. And there are those that don't. It's not always the yeshiva, it's also the, the student and the, the environment. But the most important, the Rebbe said, even if what you're saying is right, but there's something that you get in a in Timchit Mim that you can't just teach somebody. It's not in a book. It's a, it's a hergish in a lakus, in a chesidus, and in the emes of Teirah. So you can learn and know Teda, but you don't necessarily get that hergish. There's an environment that the whole Temchet Pum was built, as the, Alta, as the Rebbe Rashab writes in Kuntas Eitzachayim, not just to have another yeshiva where you learn. A lot of yeshivas, they were great yeshivas at the time. Remember, until Temchet Pum, all Chabad Bochrim went to other yeshivas. There was no Babish yeshiva. So there was clearly yeshivas. 
Um, but what the Rebbe Rashab says, what he wants to have is more than just another place of learning, a place that will be Durgenum and with Yira Shemayim and Ava Vigira, and above all, the Yetzel Mohammed's based David, people who come away and feel the obligation to take this Tayra and teach it to others and to bring, change the world with it. It's very different. You know, when people like say, how can we replicate? A lot of people looking at the model of Chabad today. How can we replicate what the Rebbe did with Shluchim? How can we inspire our communities, our students, to go out all over the world and be Mesha Nefesh and build Mejdis and so on? And we all know you can't just replicate that. It's not a formula that's on paper. It requires a deep, exactly the word iskashus, iskashus to the Rebbe, which really means iskashus to the Rebbe's Inyonim and the Rebbe's Hashkof and the Rebbe's Teira and all the Rabbeim, it's more than just learning. It's not just someone sat and learned Chassidus and says, okay, I'm ready to give my whole life for it. To give your life for something means that you are completely immersed in it and completely connected to it, that you're ready to act on it. And that's the real Evan Abech. So when you say Hakara and Hargosha, it means you're not just learning an idea, you're also, you feel like it resonates. It's almost like when you hear a nigan, a song. You know, what does a song do? A song has a certain hisamtus. You sense, it resonates the truth that touches you. Like I said before, it touches you. It's not just an, uh, another experience. And same thing, Hargosha. So that's the connection. And obviously, there's probably many more details in Das that I'm not covering right now because I'm not going to go through everything. But sometimes you'll also find that in Klippa there's no Das. Like it says that Meich, uh, in Klippa the Meich doesn't have Das. There's a, a list of contradictions sometimes. It says Amalek is Klippa of Das. And then yet yeah, it says there's no Klippa in Das. In, uh, in Eter, the Rebbe Rashab talks about it. But essentially the reason is because, like he says, from the Zoya, I believe, because a Sodis ain't a Melid, which means in Klippa, it's not Nigeya, it's Kashus. It's like, the, 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 so therefore, there's no Heloda, so there's no Iskashu. That's why there's no Das in Klippa. You could have very brilliant Rishoyim who did a lot of destruction in this world, and they were Chachm and Bina they had, clearly. The Lerishus, the Lera, not the Tev. But his kashus requires a deep connection to something, and that's a kedusha dika thing. It's a premius dika thing. It's like uh, the vort of the Mitla Rebbe, where he says uh, that when two Eden come together, it's two nefesh alikis and one nefesh abanus. So the Bavusta question, the Rebbe asks a number of times, one minute, each Eden also has a nefesh abanus. So why is it not two nefesh alikis against two nefesh abanus? Why suddenly is only one nefesh abanus? <laughs> So we're back to square one. It's, it's, not, it's still two against two. So the Rebbe's Taich says, because Eino dem chete velele, that your Nefesh Abam is not, is not interested in the Nefesh Abam is of somebody else. So therefore the Nefesh Abam is not going to really join forces. I, we see sometimes uh, bad people join forces. Yeah, because they have self-interest. They feel it's in their interest. But, you don't have, but, but in Klippa, there's no Bittl. Since there's no Bittl, my Nefesh Abam doesn't care about what your Nefesh Abam is. My Nefesh Abamis actually cares about me. I, I want the food. I want the money. I'm not ready to share it with you. Now, why Ga- Ganovim sometimes shares? I said, for that moment, it's convenient because they need uh, cooperation, etc., etc. But it's not a primis de capital. So, so the concept of Das is really not there in, in Klippe. Even though B'chitzeni sometimes it appears so, like I just said, but it's not a really, it's not a r- lasting bitl dika experience. It's coming from Yeshus, basically. And Das, one second, one second, let me just finish. And Das is essentially a primizdika thing, like if you remember when I spoke about when a kesa nimna in a Das nimna, that you don't count kesa and Das, that's why there's always only 10 spheres. So Chassidus explains that you count kesa when you count chitzenius as spheres. Because chitzenius as spheres, Das is not there, because Das is not a chitzenius. It's not shaykh chitzenius, kashu bechitzenius. Either you have it or you don't have it. You can have chokhmah and bina, but chitzeni is chokhmah and primi is bechokhmah. Chitzeni is bina, primi is bina. But it's not shy, chitzeni is das, in that sense. Whereas when you count the spheres but primi is, then das is counted. And you don't count chitzeni is akeser, which is arich. We discussed it back then. You want to ask something? Yeah, why is das more different than I just explained it for the last half hour. It's a, 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 a tiny, his kashus. Chachmim don't have his kashus. 
Chochmah being you could experience something and it's not nothing to do with you. In Gedusha, everything is about internalizing it. The bitl you have toward it. And that's what Das introduces. So even Chochmah being of Gedusha will not be mailed. He says clearly, the Mien is Shof. Not talking about Chochmah being in Klippa. Even in Gedusha, even if a kiss will not give birth. Because you can't have a kiyum, a real kiyum, without the f- fullest kashas to something. Okay. When do we, we count the and that we count We don't count das when you count chitzenis. You count chesed, chesed, chach, mabina, chesed, to the malchus. What does it mean that in chitzenis we don't count das? Because das is not a chitzenis. Sometimes when, uh, when it comes to things that are more well, course, connected to the world, for example. Just like we use das, adam yadas chava, you don't use it all the time. That's used when you need to give birth. So when the connected to the world, there's no das? There is das. You just don't count it as one of the spheres because das's main function is a primi. You just ask me why sometimes things are counted by chitzeni and sometimes primi. It depends what you're dealing with. Like, uh, like I mentioned before, a child is more chitzenius. So that's why a child doesn't have das. Panemius is when once you have the maturity, you can connect to something. So it all depends on what you're dealing with. Um, in Samachai, he talks about this, the Shvur Samshach, about the chitzenius and panemius of the spheres. And when you count one, there's still there's still a question that remains hanging with that, but that's another discussion, not for here. Um, and I mentioned Eter, and Eter also. There's a whole section on Das. Um, as I said, I'm going through the main Akudas, but not the, every every detail. Okay. Fine. Now, um, the final thing about Das, like he says, is the Helodas Hamidis. Now, Das is still one of the Gimel Mechen, but you will find in places that Das sometimes breaks into two, into the Chesed Shabbat and Gvurah Shabbat because Das is the intimamutza between Mechen and Midas, which makes total sense. Because if you're not going to have iskashes to the idea, if you just stay with Chachm and Bina, you're never going to move to Midas. So Das is the place where your Mechen ceases to be an abstract idea, but Sedain Tata. It now becomes something that's negated to you. If it's negated to you, it's inevitable that the next step is going to give birth, that now you're going to have a love, an avid to this idea. Like I said before, you're going to dance with the Sefer Teda, or it's going to come down to Avas Hashem, because it's not just that you learned about the Ebrister in a philosophical way, it's negated benefish to you. That's what Das does. So Das is the prerequisite to be able to then have real Midas. And that's why sometimes it speaks about Das being the Mokar Hamidis or Maftech the Kol Shis. Basically the key that opens up to all the other levels of, to the, sphere, to the emotions that come afterwards, which we will discuss as well. So, in simple, Balbatasha Nafkamina Lepeil, in the context of what I always bring up, which is, my Nafkamina, why do you need Das in the whole picture? I think it's pretty obvious. Without Das, our connection to Lakus, even if we have Chachm and Bina, will remain disconnected from us personally. It won't be personalized. It'll be a concept. I'm not saying a person has Chachm and Bina cannot do a mitzvah and will never have any Avavir. The Alter Rebbe also says, but ultimately it won't be, it won't have Kiyum because it didn't really become yours. You didn't own it. And becoming yours, that's what Das adds. So, I could just tell you how I use it all the time. You're dealing with people, when you're giving classes, or mentoring someone, or counseling someone, whatever it is that they want in their lives, you always look for these things. You can see, you look whether they, where their das is, where they're re- really connected to. There are a lot of people, you know, they have a, a true amuna, and they have good, you say this in Yiddishkeit, but there's a lack of iskashas. They have more iskashas to making money than to uh, the Rebbe and the Rebbe Zinyonim. Now, I'm not here to criticize everyone, anyone. We all have our challenges, including myself. But it's important to diagnose when you're talking to someone, 
And again, not to judge anyone or criticize, but it's important to know what's the thing that's lacking. Now some people may be lacking Chachm and Bina. They don't really understand Chassidus or understand what the Rebbe wants and stuff like that. But then someone can understand, but what's lacking is this Kashistit. And that can be for many different reasons. Either they, they always learned it in an abstract way. I mean, I can't tell you how many hundreds of people have told me they learned in yeshiva and our yeshivas. And they don't feel connected to it. Yeah, so they, they know. Like one guy told me, yeah, I learned about Lamates, Malachas, and Esa Sviris. All in one pot. 39 Malachas and 10 Sviris. You know, a bunch of numbers. And then a dozen eggs you could also throw into there. So there's much as eggs on the gate, and that's how the Sviris on the gate. Now, I'm not criticizing the persons because that's the, way, that's the way he was taught. I also went to these yeshivas. I know how it was taught. Um, you know, hopefully we're going to make things better and hopefully you, you're part of the solution, not part of the problem. And whatever contributions you'll make, wherever you'll, your shlichus will take you, that is one of the most important things is creating eskashas. Now, we always talk about eskashas to the Rebbe, but what does it really mean? Eskashas to the Rebbe doesn't just mean you have a picture hanging on the wall or you sing the Rebbe's Nikurim, or learn the Rebbe's Maimorim. His kashas means that your nefesh is bekusha to the Rebbe's nefesh. What the Rebbe's negate to the, to the Rebbe, what is in your name, is negate to you, and you act on it, and you live up to it. So there's many ways that you can apply the concept of Das to our practical lives. It's not just a, an abstract thing, it's very practical in many ways. The question then is, what do you do to help somebody find his kashas to something? al but that he doesn't say. He doesn't tell us the secret. How are you, Makashir, Daite, Ba'omitz, Bechezek, and so on? He says that's what's necessary. But how? If, you're not, if you're, not, you're not feeling connected, why would you even invest to, to, to connect in that way? So that's a good question. What I'll say is that that's what Aveda is. You know? If you really feel, believe in something, and you really learn about it, the next step is commitment. It's like just like anything. Just like, uh, you, thank God, your guys are all cool and married, but there are a lot of guys dating, and they can't find a way to k- make a commitment. You know, commitment issues, you've heard of this issue. And what, they're basically a das issue. They have lack of iskar. You know, they can, they can date uh, uh, serial daters, and they never come to make a decision. Adults have to make decisions. You can't always stay on the fence. In many ways, that's a das thing. It's not just on paper it's right. It, sometimes you need to be pushed. Sometimes you need a deadline. You need pressure. So how you get to a place like this, you take every, whatever it takes to, to, to motivate yourself. Sometimes it takes a chavah. Sometimes it takes a mashpia. Something that pushes someone to move away from just understanding the idea and getting them to act on it. Or getting them, I would say even better, to commit to it. You know, you're being interviewed for a job. You have to make a decision by a certain day. You want the job or not? Is it something you want to do or you don't want to do? Something you believe in, something you're ready to commit your life to. Commitment is not that easy. It's scary. Because sometimes you feel maybe it's not the right thing. Maybe there's some other option. You know how we always hold out for another option, another option. But this is all what a mature DAS process is about, is getting his kashas to something. Now, hopefully we all grew up in this environment so we already have these uh, foundations that you say this in place. But his kashas is more than just that. I remember even, I remember like today, I remember once uh, the Rebbe would give a brach er, er Yom Kippur to the Bachrin uh, before Kol Nidre, which was a very emotional and powerful moment. And I remember a chaver of mine told me right after that brach, one of that one brach, the Rebbe was always very moving, the Rebbe would cry, the you know, it was like the Rebbe speaking to his children. And we were the only children the Rebbe had. So it was a very uh, personal experience, both for the Vachim and I'm sure for the Rebbe. You could see the way the Rebbe treated it, like a Yechidus, uh, with all the Pratim. So there was one guy, he was a, a very good guy, he was a good Talmud, and he told me, right after one of the Baruchas, he said to me, you know, this Baruch had changed my life, because he felt at some point when the Rebbe, I think in the beginning when the Rebbe started crying, and he said that Abish was like Benshin or something, and he felt that that pushed him over, that I'm in. He's now a very much matzliach because a successful shliach. But I know it was that moment, because he told me, he said to me, it was that moment. What happened? He was a chesidah before, and he was committed before, but he didn't have that, that, that absolute commitment. And whatever it was, that something, something touched him, something struck him, and it can stay with the rest of your life, especially in your younger years. 
Now, I'm sure all of us have had moments like that. These are all like das moments, to put it in practical terms. Now, I said I was going to speak a little about Chav Chesiv Nisan, um, and I will. And I think it's a good segue, because everybody wonders, you know, you probably heard hundreds of drushes on Chav Ches Nisan. It's already 31 years, so you heard at least 31 drushes. Um, I don't know if you're that old enough yet, but I did. Um, and it's more than 31, because all the other drushes on Gimel Tammuz and Yeralf Nisan, I mean, everyone's always talking about the Sheikh and the Rebbe, especially Chav Ches Nisan. The emotional words that the Rebbe said 31 years ago tomorrow, Tavshin Hun Aleph, Ava Tavshin Pei Beit. So in many ways, like uh, people uh, say, you know what, what can you say, what else can you say? If the Rebbe once said in the middle of a Fabrengen, I remember, he was speaking about something, I don't remember what it was, but he was like, he was very passionate about the certain union. It was, I think, in one of the new Mifzayim. And then the Rebbe stopped and smiled and said, no, tell the Chacham the Yech Basically, the Rebbe said that if, if everything I said till now didn't pile on you, what's going to help if I say more? You know, so there's a point where you stop and say, tell the Chacham should take it and do something with it. You know, they say the opposite expression. And someone says, if I didn't hear the first time, I'm not going to hear the second time. So the Rebbe basically, in a way, Chav Ches Sivan Nisan, he said something like that too. The beginning of the Sikha, the earlier part of the Sikha, before you started the, 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 the famous words, Chigitanaut, and all of those atheists, the Rebbe said, What's the Telfin? Another explanation, Rashi or Rambam, and it'll be written down, and it'll be published, and people will put it on their shelves. The Rebbe was basically saying exactly that. that so what else can be said? 31 years after all the drushes and all the speeches. So I was thinking maybe in the context we're talking about, maybe what's lacking most is the das, the iskashas. And I think that every chassid cares about the Rebbe, cares what the Rebbe wants. And therefore that's why people passionately try to figure out what to do in the context of the Rebbe's Zaysius and Chavches uh, Nissen, and what can we do that we haven't done yet Etc. But if you really want to get, if you don't see action coming out of people, and I can tell you, I was around for the last 31 years and more, longer. And what I see is that, again, good intentions, a lot of chassidishidin, I'm not questioning that at all. People who give their life for the Rebbe, shlichus in other ways. So it's not a question of, of people committed. But when it comes to Mashiach, for whatever reason, it, it seems to fizzle out into any real big game plan. Yeah, you have those that feel the way to go is uh, Yechi HaMelech, or uh, Yechi, or uh, Taurus HaMelech, whatever that means. But you don't have a sustainable um, campaign. So what we end up having is this frustra frustrating fabrengens and talks, where you talk about it, and say, what else can we do? You know, and that seems to be, the, when it comes to the other Mifzayim, Mifzat film, Mifzat mezuzah. These are tangible Mifzayim. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are put on film. Millions made. Mezuzahs being put on doors. Other Mifzayim. They're tangible and there are campaigns. There are organizations <coughs> completely dedicated to that. When it comes to Mashiach, no one seems to be able to define what exactly you're supposed to be doing. So yes, yeah, so we have the Lil Medin Yon and Gil Mashiach. That's the Rebbe's Aces, to learn about it. So you have Shiurim. But you know, shirim also, as one guy told me, okay, I go to a shir in Gula, it became another shir. I go to a shir also, Daf Yemi, in Gula, and Rambam, and Chitas. So it becomes again a routine thing. When you have the Iskashos, when you see the Rebbe, uh, the, the emotions and the passions, just listen to the Sikh of Chavches Nis, uh, and many others similar, but especially that one. You see, it's not the Rebbe just talking about it as a nice concept. For some reason, that seems to be lacking because nobody feels it's their problem. How many people have told me, this is for other people, Mashiach is a big thing, I'm not shy to that. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. This, hundreds of chassidim say that, thousands. Even shluchim. That, that nobody feels that they have to take the lead or in some way be proactive. 
So it ends up being something that you don't really see any type of action like that. And I honestly, I'm not saying this to be critical, I'm just saying an observation that I've seen. So since we're talking about Chochma bin Adas, it seems like the Das is missing. So then the question is how you get that. How can we relate to Mashiach? Literally the other day a guy said to me, he said, how can I relate to Mashiach? Mashiach is a thing in the future. Mifzit film is a mitzvah today. Every day we put on film. I know how to put on film. I know how to put on film and know someone else. Mashiach, I don't know what it is. It's in the future. So how am I supposed to do something today about something that will come tomorrow that I have nothing no clue about? So the answer is, well, why don't you find out what it's about? Maybe that's exactly what the Rebbe meant, little midin yon and Mashiach. If you don't feel tangibly that you can live with it right now, of course you can't talk about it with anyone. You can't convince, sell something to someone else that you yourself haven't uh, embraced. You have yourself no hiskashas or das to. So I think there's a lot of chokhman bin. I am sure if any of you right now interviewed, you can get up and, and speak an hour about Gul, you'll have plenty what to say. You'll quote the Rambam, you quote Chassidus, you quote the Rebbe Sichis. We have hundreds of things to say. Every sikha from Nun, Nun Aleph, Nun Bey is all about Gula Mashiach. What you got to do is chaz it over. And beautiful sikhas. Beautiful sikha this, this week's Achre and Gdeshim. Then it was Achre Gdeshim about Goyal and Gula. I mean, I'm sure you know so many of these sikhas. But it's Chachman Bina. It's not necessarily Das. So the sense, so, the, so I want to just suggest, and I, it's not the first time I said this. I have said it already 31 years myself. So. But I'm just saying it to myself again, I guess. I'm not saying it to myself well. Dvorim ayetz min alev is iskashis. It's negated to your heart. That unless you can envision Gaul and mamish right now in your life, in your personal life, in your marriage, in your home, in your, the street you walk on, you are not, living, you're not relating to Gaul. There's no way you can explain Gaul to someone if you yourself can't envision it. So I give always one exa two examples, but one example from the Rebbe's letters. The famous one, maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't, is a letter from the Rebbe about dry cleaners. You know the lesson from a dry cleaner? I must have mentioned it here. I know I caused it, so I guess I mentioned it, maybe I didn't. So the Rebbe writes to our dry cleaners, of all people. I think it's a letter from Tavshi Yud Gimel. And he writes, everything is a shroch pratis, everything is a hirah b'avedis Hashem, everything we see in here. So what's the lesson from dry cleaning? So the Rebbe says, what's the Chiddush of a cleaners? You buy garments, you buy begadim, levushim. You wear them once, twice, three times, four times, five times, some point, they get dirty, they get wrinkled, they get soiled. And if you're a Balabatashi person, you're not going to be able to wear it again. Comes the Chiddush of cleaners, no? You bring it to cleaners, what they do is they immerse the garment in water. Not just water, warm water. They mix chemicals and the chemicals get rid of the stains and the smudges and so on. Then they put it under a heavy press, right, a heavy press, and they press it, a fresh, what is it, fresh, like a new garment. And you can repeat this process many times. What's the Hiran Avedis Hashem? Neshama Shenesata Bi Teherihi. We say every morning. However, life takes over, and the different pains, the different challenges, the different uh, difficulties in life can soil you, can wrinkle you. So the neshama, that's the hater, can get dirty. So you'd think, okay, it's over. You get older, it's only one way street. You only, you, get, you only get more polluted and more smudged and more uh, stained, and there's no way out. It says, no. You immerse the neshama in mayim, ain't mayim elateda, water. And not just stam water, but warm water, varumkite, chmimus, not kaltkite. And you mix chemicals. Every mitzvah is another chemical that removes another stain from, the, from our Vedas or other things that we've done. And then you put it under Kabbalah's oil. Oil. Heavy weight, like a press. Kabbalah's el machashamayim. And that creates the neshama, refreshes the neshama, tehedihi. And you can repeat this process throughout your life many times. Okay, beautiful letter, right? Whatever. The unique. The Rebbe's inimitable style. Now, here's what I want to say, and I'll, and I'll conclude with this. I remember after I read the letter, I was walking on Kingston Avenue, and I uh, noticed between Empire and uh, Montgomery and Kingston are dry cleaners. Now, you usually don't look at cleaners unless you have to bring your clothing there. Right? Who, who cares about what cleaners? 
And then I notice another cleaner is on Cross Street, and one between President and Union. And then there's on Albany and on Troy. You know, how many cleaners there are, whatever. And I never looked at cleaners the same way again. Because to me, this was a perfect example of the Rebbe taking the Aleph of Alufa Shalela, putting it into Gaila, a dry cleaners, which usually, the only reason you'd use it is to clean your clothing, and it's really only a moshal for Avedis Hashem. Every time I look at a cleaners, I remind myself how you refresh your Nisham. So imagine you can do the same thing, look at the pizza shop that way, and gumbos, and the, and the sushi places, and the grocery stores, I don't know all the names of the stores, sweet expressions, of course and all the other uh, 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 and part of the joints. That's just in, Kings, in Kingston Avenue. And uh, uh, basically it means you're looking at the world with a different set of eyes. Now a Rebbe sees a Lechatchil, a Rebbe sees a Lechus everywhere. But we were taught by the Rebbe how to do that. Now if you did that every day, and you taught it to your family, and your children when they're of age, even young children, it trains you to think and look at something with exactly what the Rambam says. Lo kola elam, el ladasa sashem What does that mean? The, the business of the world will be nothing but deus Hashem. It means people will not work. They'll all be sitting all day and learning chsidus. And everything they do, eating, drinking, whatever, but whatever they do is not, it's asik will be as a emtsoi for dasa sashem. Like a cleaners teaches us about the Shomash and the Satabi. And a scientist teaches the understands the, the cosmos. And astronomy as Magadlu Hashem, Magadlu Hashem, Rabu Masach Hashem, Magadlu Masach Hashem. And a doctor, Mepsari Echzalika, can teach us the secrets of Elakus that are Betzala Melakim embedded in the human body, in the human anatomy and biology and chemistry. Everything in existence, we say clearly, we say in the Mishnah. And the Pirkei what do we say? So it's about seeing Kvede in everything. Now, if you try to do that 24-7 and everything is going to be pretty difficult. But if we start training ourselves a little, that's called looking goal. And then you can share it with someone else. Like I just shared the story with the cleaners. You could share the same thing with other things. So it's about being mamchishit. This, I believe, is a form of das, not just an idea. It makes it iskash as it's negated to me. That this thing called the geula is negate benefish to our lives. I'm just giving one nukudah because the time limits. I already went over time, and I thank you for your indulgence. Um, but the nukudah is that unless we take it to heart, the sikh of the Rebbe will remain a chachman bin a sikh. And it won't be actualized. I see this again and again. And not because anyone has bad intentions, because it's not going over that line of turning it into a personal thing. It, that's, to me, to me, the critical component. And you can find many ways to personalize it. I just gave one example. There are many examples. So the Rebbe should help that even before tomorrow. Um, we should already tell him, Yikrov and Yenna, do what we have to do. And we should already be reunited with the Rebbe and do that little part that Rebbe wants from us, and then the Gula can come. Gula mit is Rashleim, Mamish now. Everyone have a good day, and we'll continue next week. Yeah.